sauce on your wrist of plain Jane. The following video is broadcasting live, and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. What up and welcome back. It's your girl Jane, the plainest Jane, and we got some syrup to get into. Listen, I know I was supposed to be eating, going to sleep, maxing, relaxing, and getting some self-care in, but look, I see that D.L. Hughley done responded to Monique for what seems to be a final time. And I decided, look, I'm not going to look at his response by myself and even develop an opinion, right? Uh, before I come to you, I said, listen, I want to talk about this. I want to uncover this with my stickies and formulate my opinion as we take it in. So look, I know it's late. It's literally quarter to one. But look, let's get into it. Okay, listen, it's late night. Thank you for coming in. Hit thumbs up, hit thumbs up, hit thumbs up. How are you feeling about Monique and D.O. Hughley? And let's see if this, this response, and it seems to be a little lengthy, actually. Let's see if it changes our trajectory and how we feel about this, this situation thus far. And let me just go ahead and say this, okay? I sense myself wearing my hair up a lot more moving forward. I like how I look with my hair up. I like the the way my bone structure is able right the accentuation of my bone structure but listen nonetheless let's let's get right into it right i don't want to waste no time it's late at night let's unpack what dl hughley has to say to monique chow and and let's conspire about if monique is going to respond another time because this back and forth it's been all weekend at this point come on in Hit thumbs up, share the stream, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. All right, let's get started. The takeoff. The plain is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I love me some black, and she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me, or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? Now, as always, I instruct you to take care of your mental health before you get to dibbling and dabbling and whatever craziness is transpiring out in the world. So now that y'all hit thumbs up on this video, okay, and hit the notification bell for actual razzle dazzle, let's get right into what the hell D.L. Hughley has got to say, okay? Now, what is going on here? It's very hard to control the environment. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, that was Khalid talk. I worked very hard to control the environment I worked in comedic. I only work where I want to work and who I want to work for. I want to work with. I don't work I, I, because that is a very precious place for me. I, I've been offered uh, a gig, uh, a couple of gigs, uh, three or four gigs, uh, uh, to work with Monique in L.A., in Brooklyn, in uh, Houston. And I turned them down because I just I, I didn't think it would work. Um, so uh, after talking to a lot of people, uh, and uh, one of the very people in this room about how things are different, uh, two of the very people in this room, as a matter of fact, and how things are different, and look at, you know, how things are coming around, I decided it would be wrong for me not to give somebody a chance based on things that they'd never done to me. That would have been wrong to me. And, and when she talks, and she goes on her diatribe, and she talks about me having my feet under her table, that was at her invitation. Uh, I, I was doing a gig in Greenbelt, Maryland. She lived in Baltimore. She was having a fight party. It was... Uh, I think Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson. And sure enough, I came to her table at her invitation. And it was a wonderful time. As a matter of fact, it was based on that interaction, along with talking to people, I decided that I would do these gigs. I decided oh, I would do it. Okay. And now I know what Tyler Perry knows. I know what Lee Daniels knows. I know this. Wait a minute now. If she was so upset at the discrepancies that she laid out on stage about being so butthurt about him and only having one straw, because it seemed like it was three straws that broke the camel back, the third straw was the final straw. But you mean to tell me in the meantime and in between time, there was some amends or an, an, an olive branch that was extended on her end. And as soon as the contract got a little sticky, we got the rehashing old shit from before the olive branch. I don't know. Let's keep listening. 
what Oprah knows. I know what Steve Harvey knows. I know what Charlemagne the God knows. I know what Netflix knows. Saying yes to Monique is an occupational hazard. Now, come, we go to, uh, we're playing a gig in a... An occupational hazard. Baby, he's... Damn, not calling Monique an occupational hazard. Shout out to Bossy. Thank you for coming into the chat. Haven't seen you in a long time. And thank you for stopping through, stranger. Let's keep going. Who child? Detroit this weekend. Um, I, 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 I know I'm going on at 945. I leave the hotel. I get there around 9. Monique had just gotten there. She's supposed to be there, uh, there at 840. She had just gotten there, uh -oh. gone at 840. She got there at 838. What Monique was trying to do was to slow walk the show. She didn't get end up getting on for 30 minutes. The oldest trick in the world is if I want to change the order and I don't have merit, I'll try to make people wait so long that everybody gets nervous and go, please, just, just go on so we, we can avoid a conflict. Oh. That didn't happen. Monique got on stage. Monique actually felt like she had merit. She would have done one of three things. Either she would have took it up with the promoter, and she did, and the promoter said, we're going on, and whether you're going or not, that's a different thing. You would have not done it, but she knew she had to be on stage or she would have been in breach of contract or she would have come to talk to me. She didn't ever. And I and I, I emphatically emphasize this. She never once talked to me. I, I haven't seen Monique in years. I didn't see her at the venue before, after or during. I haven't spoken or seen Monique. So if you really thought that you had a, a legitimate contract dispute, you would have come to me and said, hey, I have this contract and you had this contract. Notice not one thing on that contract, not one person she has on that contract, not one thing happened. Do you know why? Because it wasn't legitimate. And she goes on stage and she proceeds to eviscerate me, not just me, but Steve Harvey, uh, the, the sexual, uh, my wife, my dog later on in subsequent conversations. Let me ask you something. What did any of that have to do with an alleged contract dispute? What does Steve Harvey have to do with your contract? What did I have to do with your contract? What did my dog have to do with your contract? What does my wife have to do with your contract? You wrote your contract, you and your daddy. You you you, you proceeded to say things that were so patently insulting that that it, it, it was galling. It was galling. You 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 ask in subsequent conversations why I have a dog, a support dog. What kind of person has a support dog? I have that dog because my father died. My children and family decided they would get a dog from where he was from, and I named the dog after my father. I don't have a dog to keep people away from me. I have a dog, so I have my father with me all the time. That is an act of love, which you know very little about. You, baby, I'm I'm blown away already. I feel like we only what, what are we like? We we were like two and a half, three minutes into this. She's making fun of him needing of him needing a support dog. Support dogs are oftentimes needed when there is either a chemical imbalance to support your your you know your chemical imbalances if there is, you know, perhaps there's some depression or this that and the third. Would we consider that to be ableist or what? Cuz she definitely made fun of you know what I'm saying? The wife, the kids, the dog. Then she throws in the fact that he may like men. When Monique herself also likes women, she's admitted this. So if she's by then calling him bisexual because he's a man with a wife who also likes women, and that's her, her assumption, she is also a woman with a husband who also likes women. So, baby, let me, let me, let me, let me go to the bush because, baby... <laughs> It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. This is a lot. Someone said to cut the, the volume up on the video. I don't believe I have that ability, but let's see if it'll get any louder. See the tip assault my sexuality you have the temerity to assault someone's sexuality a man's sexuality given who you lay next to uh oh none of that had anything to do with alleged contact track dispute you could have taken that up with a lawyer you would have gotten out you could have not gotten gone on stage but you knew you didn't have a valid contract and you do what you always have done you tried to weaponize black femininity you tried to turn that audience against me you tried to burn everything down like you do all the time who calls Netflix and thinks I can get $10 million because I did the Queens of Comedy? Who thinks you can get on stage and still live off that? 
I was a king of comedy. You never hear me talking about it because in this business, like any other, it isn't what you have done, it's what you do. Hello? That, I agree. That show was one I signed on to do. I made the quintessential mistake, the horrible mistake that like Tyler Perry, like Lee Daniels, like Oprah, like all these people of saying yes to you. And it is an occupational hazard. It is my fault. I have learned my lesson. You didn't just, and it isn't the things that you said, because I know who I am and I know what I do. And I have a pristine reputation. And everybody who knows me know what, I, what, what I'm about. It's this whole, my dear, my babies, I love you for real, which is so transparently false, it is ridiculous. But the thing that, that was really the most annoying, the thing that was really the most bothersome, is after a, a, a terrible couple of weeks where people were being slain in Buffalo, where people were being slain, kids were getting slain in school, and people had come to a comedy show to get away from all of their problems, you besiege them with yours. The one contract that isn't in dispute is the one that the audience had with us to entertain them. But every single time, more and more, you spend half of your time talking about your grievances and what you didn't get and who did this to you. Listen, when you burn things up and you sit back to watch the results of them, she's literally set that stage on fire, oh. said the most incendiary things ever, and I had to go on stage. If she has the temerity to call me a coward, a coward would have left. A coward would have said, I can't go. You didn't even want to go on when you had a, a contract that you knew that not to be true. You made up this whole narrative that you knew not to be true, and you played that out in front of the audience. And then I had to go on behind you. And you know what you did? You sat back and you tried to watch your damage. You set the stage on fire and you watched what you've done. You know who does that? Arsonists do that. Arsonists set shit on fire and Ooh. try to see the damage it does. Ooh. But I, I blame myself because I know now what I didn't before. Saying yes to you is an occupational hazard. One I will not repeat. I don't blame you. I wish you well. But when you do the things you do, when everything's about you, when you're vitriolic, when you have all these fights and all of these entities, it is you. Precious was not a movie. Precious was an autobiography. That is who you are, literally. You, you mad at the contract you and daddy wrote? Your daddy? And I don't know why you call a man daddy and you pay for him. That's a son. Let's be clear. I am not angry with you. I'm angry with me. I did what I knew not to be true. But I'm going to tell you something. When you burn and you destroy and you wreck, you are not a queen of comedy. You're a queen of ashes. Oh! Oh! So when you, I'm going to go back to work and you get to, back to your kingdom of smoke. That's a little note from the GED section oh of the Jared God. Report coming up in 15 minutes. It's the D.L. Hughley Show. All right, that was Khalid Talk. Oh I work very hard to control the environment I work in comedians. I only work where I want to work. <laughs> and who I want to work. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you guys. You guys. You guys, listen. Listen. <laughs> First of all, we got Oprah in the building, Okay. Shout out to Oprah. I, I agree. They need to leave you out of it, Oprah. But God damn, he just read the shit. Where do I start? Listen, one thing about me is, is I value uh, being prepared. So I value not spending a lot of time on camera figuring out how I feel or sifting through my thoughts. Um, but this is something that we're doing right now, right? Because I'm typically prepared. I, I, I watch and I go through things. and I, So this is a, a bit of a different video, right? And I'm perplexed. I'm really blown away at his way with words here. D.L. Hughley is somebody who admittedly has a learning disability, right? And a speech impediment he's admitted to. He read the shit out of her just now. Um... First off, he calls out that she was late. She was late. She came in there trying to be late on purpose because, and according to him, right, if you're late, they'll encourage other people to just go on, go on, go on because we need the show to continue. One thing that I did notice, um, matter of fact, before I go into what I noticed in my thoughts, let's, let's stay on track with what D.L. Hughley said. He said, you're an arsonist. You set that stage ablaze. You set fires everywhere. And you sit to watch that damage. You know who does that? An arsonist. I said, damn. That is something. I, I, I thought he was going to go there and say that. That that that, that white supremacist. You should do it, right? 
because they like to kill us and hang us and, and do all this negative shit to the black community and then watch us struggle, try to live, try to survive, whether it be trying to eat, trying to live with the noose around on that ground. We talking about setting fires and the arsonists sit, they set fires. I think people would agree, right? Arguably, right? Debatably, Monique does set a lot of fires off. Not looting, not social and political looting. And again, your issue being with your contract and you brought his kids, his wife, you assume things about his sexuality, about him potentially liking the same sex you like the same sex too. You added some homophobia in there, knowing that you like women too. Was all that necessary because you misunderstood your contract? Your contract wasn't with D.O. Hughley. Your contract was with the promoter slash venue, your management, and yourself. So the breach of contract is not anything that you can take D.O. Hughley to court with. That's something that you... <laughs> You got to take up with the, the promoters. He said, listen, I'm going to get back to work and I'm going to let you get back to your, your queendom or your kingdom of smoke. Damn. One thing that I realized about Monique sometimes, and uh, I want to be team Mo. I really do. I just feel like she handled this wrong because the promoters fucked them over. The promoters promised them conflicting things. The promoters promised them both the same thing, which was impossible. So why isn't that sort of venom being directed at the promoters? That's the question. And one thing I noticed is Monique's passive aggression. You came in his sexuality, his family, his wife, all that. And then turned around and said in a, in a, in a caption, I love you. I, I still love you, brother. I love you for real. Ain't nothing like somebody cussing you out and disrespecting you and belittling you and emasculating you and all that other stuff and then telling you I love you, whether it be friend, family, or whatever. Keep that shit. Because you cut deep on purpose and you can't just wrap deep cuts and attacks in a I love you and think that it's still going to be perceived as 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 tough love. No, that was abuse. It was bullying. It was It, it was unprovoked. You know, when we talk about, um, damn, he got me taken back. I wonder if Monique is going to say anything else. <laughs> Woo! Let me see what y'all saying in the comments, because I'm, I'm really taken aback right now. I really am. Um, nobody wants that kind of love. Exactly. You know what? I'm glad I didn't have to say it. Listen, I, I feel like I, I hint every now and then to, um, you know, my personal situation, right? And, um, but I'm glad you said it. Belize gal 80, okay? Because my mother can be so disrespectful and then be like, but I love you. And are you coming over for this holiday? No, the fuck I'm not. I don't give a shit if you, I got friends and strangers that'll treat me better than you and I don't. You can't love me and disrespect me in the same breath and expect for me to, oh, but that's love though. No, you make me feel like shit and then you don't want me to return it. And if I return it, I'm doing too much. Which means you think that I'm obligated to accept this bullshit from you. No, you had an issue with your contract and the company that promised you things. D.O. Hughley didn't promise her shit. <laughs> D.O. Hughley ain't promised Monique anything. The company did. So why is this smoke not being directed at the company? She can call his contract, his deal memo bullshit all she wants to. Okay. But he ain't the one that promised you anything. That company is. So why aren't you giving them that type of smoke? You wanted an excuse to hit below the belt there. And I get it. Comedy is art and, and all this other stuff. But listen, the, the, the question of the day is, is, Monique blackballing herself is she difficult to work with Oprah Winfrey says right Oprah Winfrey in my chat says Monique is the Azalea Banks of comedy very talented but a self sabotage I agree she's a self sabotage and that's my opinion this is coming from somebody who my mother went to school with Monique and they roam the halls together. So I have 
inside knowledge on Monique's character when they were in high school. But honestly, there's not a lot that's different between the, the, the public conception of Monique. She definitely set a fire and was waiting to see what was going to happen. And to set a fire over a contractual misobligation, misobligation, a, a, a contractual confliction, right? That makes you look like a liability to any company that want to work with you because people, sometimes your, your, your contract or the agreement, sometimes that may be a mistake or an error and things get misconstrued and you need to correct them or adjust your contract or the agreement when people need to pay you money. But if every time you misunderstand or misinterpret your contract, you become a liability and attack people's family and their sexuality and everything like that, it makes you a liability. Mm, 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 mm. This is this is very interesting. This is I I I would like her to stop hurting as well. I would like I see somebody in the comments says I want her to stop. Someone says I'm embarrassed for her. Sheree Butler says I want I want her to I want her to stop hurting, but I think she keeps stabbing herself. Um. Yeah. Because Azalea Banks is talented. She just sabotages the hell out of herself. Um, so some people feel like she's her own worst enemy. And look, this this is a trip. You know what I'm saying? She she wants to make fun of his deal memo and says that that's not a real contract. But listen, his, his demands, his legal bonded documents, they were fulfilled. Yours were the ones that aren't. And your contract seems to be the consistent issue between you and your manager, who was Sydney. So at some point, the problem can't be everybody else. And not, Mo, I'm not even saying that the problem is necessarily you, because I don't want it to sound like I'm coming against you. The problem is you have a shitty management team. Your shitty management team seems to be an army of one. It seems to be your husband. And how many times have we seen husbands or fathers try to manage their wives or their children and it goes wrong? And in your case, your husband is your wife and your daddy, right? So here are the examples I have at bay. Wendy Williams, her husband managed her. And how did that go? He took a lot of her money to go off with a mistress. Mary J. Blige, her husband, Ken Do. Some people will call him Ken Can't. <laughs> Ken Do, Ken Cannot. You get it? Uh -huh. Ran off with all her money. And another woman, too. Tamar Braxton, husband, manager, ultimately didn't work out. Beyonce, Matthew Knowles, her father, didn't work at, out. Had to fire him. All of these women had to fire their husband or their dad. Your husband just so happens to be your daddy. Based off of your own admission, that's daddy. It's time to fire your husband and daddy and let him just love on you and be your lover and your father since that's what you want him to be but find somebody else to handle your business affairs because it's clear that he's incompetent another reason something i said this is part two this is my second installment on this situation so i won't divulge into all of my prior commentary on it right i would appreciate if you all would get caught up on part one of my thoughts but it seems that he's a little incompetent when it comes to your business affairs that's what it smells like. Just let him love you, sis. Just let him love you. Because it can't be everybody else. When, when you can never get what you need done on your business deal. And the common denominator is Sydney. And you're wilding out when Sydney explains things to you. And again, what other you know, what, what, what other careers has Sydney um knocked out the park and, and did a, a bang up job with because as far as we know Sydney ain't managed nobody else but you nobody else but you so it, it, it might be time to just let him love you and let him be your full time husband and maybe even assistant but manager no something's not right thank you so much um, I see that somebody who joined the membership astute queen B thank you so much for joining the membership I appreciate you um this is a lot. <laughs> Ken can't. That's what it is. She seems like she's a glutton for having problems with people. She loves to speak out on anything. Pay attention to the fact that as soon as she finished the rant, she added, I feel better now. That's true. That's true. 
True. I'm an Azalea Banks fan, but she's constantly sabotaging herself. Yeah. He's been her manager for a long time, since before she even made her physical transformation. You know, she, she lost a lot of weight. Y'all remember, you know, the Parkers and everything else. He's been her manager for the longest, longest, longest. Not Professor Ogilvy would never. Oh, my gosh. I'm weak. I'm weak. <laughs> Famecom Network, please get out of my face. Yes. Yes. This is what's going on. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, I, I, I want better for Monique. But, you know, you can't want better for people than they want for themselves. You can't want better. And honestly, we didn't see signatures from Monique. We seen initials. We seen an initial from her husband. We didn't see anything from her. And uh, this is the last point that I wanted to make, right? And this is one of the points that was in my my, my part one. With Sydney being her sole manager, management team, one person, army of one, if she was under the impression that she was going to be the headliner, the closer, and the most paid, Sydney should have seen the way that this show was being advertised and promoted. The show was being advertised and promoted as D.L. Hughley either being the headline or them co-headlining together. There was not a not near single promotion where Monique's name was placed before his, where her image was placed before his. Not one. So the fact that she doesn't have a management team that caught that, and this is a deal that they worked out towards the end of March, and this is something that took place on May 28th. The fact that management didn't catch the way the, that, that the project was being incorrectly promoted according to her paperwork and her legal documentation, it wasn't promoted correctly. And nobody caught that. Had they caught that, there might have been room there to have an additional discussion about, hey, you you know, we just want to make sure because she's the headliner and there would have been time to hash that out. But nobody caught that. And there are nine to 13 piece, nine to 12 pieces of documentation and promotional images of DL being listed first and to the left looking like he is the headliner, the closer, and or they're co-headlining together. There is not a single promotion where Monique's name comes before his. And that is a very clear indicator of who's leading, who's headlining, who's closing. And her team didn't catch any of that to correct it prior to. Talk all that legal shit if you want to. But you can't be everywhere all the time which is why you need a team. And I think that she feels that her team of one person, her team of daddy of her husband is enough. But that is what keeps getting her caught up. Listen, Monique is a very headstrong person. She's not going to get it until she really crashes and burns. She even said on stage, y'all jealous that I got a man that loves me. Baby, nobody gives a fuck. It's late at night. Excuse me, I'm being very vulgar because it gets late and not just all fucks go out the window. Nobody gives a fuck about the way you lay down in that open bed because it's an open relationship. Nobody cares. I mean, we're happy for you, but who's jealous of your relationship, of your open relationship? We're not jealous of that. Baby, we give a fuck about your career. We don't care about your bedroom. We care about your career because we want to see more Miss Parker, more of the comedy, more of the actress. That is where our interest lies. Baby, who's jealous that you have a black king? That's what you call them. Baby, nobody's jealous of your daddy. If anything, we're kind of concerned that you call him daddy out in public. But jealous of that shit. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. We want better for your career. And we're not saying kick him to the curb and kick him out your life. Let him love you. Let him fulfill your vows. Let him be your husband. Let somebody with some competence and with some stake in the game and some real experience with legitimate talent. Not that you're not legitimate talent, but that's your husband. And he's a little bit too close to home for you to see how he's not the right choice to be guiding and leading your career. He might be able to lead you in life, but... He ain't the one to lead your career. That's the nicest way I can put it. That's the nicest way I can put it. <laughs> mm. 
I I want better for my sis. I want better for my sis. I want her to create a show on social media. I want her. Monique and Sydney's open relationship is it's it's just not doing it. First of all, they're not consistent. It's not enough. Monique does have a lot of wisdom in there, though. Don't get it fucked up. She's a very wise person. And I think that she is 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 a great spokesperson to bridge the gap. I don't agree with her approach to the whole bonnet airport situation, right? When she posted that picture. I don't agree with her approach, but I understood her underlying message with the way that the younger generation presents themselves in public. You know, and 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 that situation and many others leads me to believe that there's a lot of wisdom. And, and listen, I've been I've seen Monique and y'all know I'm, I'm a Baltimore girl. Baltimore stand up. She grew up here, right here in Baltimore. So there's a whole bunch of Baltimore. So I, I understand her mentality, right? I do. It's very passionate, strong minded ass people. Monique has a lot of 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 wisdom and shit to offer. I would love to see her do a show. I would love to see her do more. I would love for her to understand how social media is her friend. It is a free tool to help you uh, gain more relevancy, right? To help you balance out some of this bullshit that you inevitably, cre you create this pattern and you do it all the time. Use social media instead of only using it for the bullshit. Monique does not have a good working relationship with social media. She just doesn't and is free and she's a creative and she could be doing more but listen i ain't getting into all of my points i ain't getting into all of the points right <sighs> she was good on charm school yeah absolutely so when i say she's got a lot of wisdom to the younger folk i know what i'm i knew that was that was somewhere y'all seen charm school with all the girls off of flavor of love and then here they come <laughs> and monique tell them when you do clownery the clown comes back around to bite because it does. Maybe that's even something that she need to apply to herself right now. When you do clownery, the clown comes back around to bite. She was right about the bonnet situation, but her delivery was whacked per, per usual, per usual. And you know how some people are like, that's just my personality. That's just how it is. And, and never take the liberty to improve. Everybody's left to deal with their, uh, and I'm not saying every now and then don't deliver a blunt message and stop sugarcoating. Like, yeah, every now and then you, you do need to, every, you know, but all the time, that's your only means of delivering messages. Like, no, uh, people with no home training. That's just how I am. Like, no. No, and I'm not saying tap dance and I'm not saying, you know, fall into, you know, anti-black agendas. I'm not saying none of that. And I do, and like I said, I, I agree with fundamentally, but taking pictures of random people and uploading them online, so irresponsible. When you have over a million followers, it was very rude and it was very cruel. She could have easily just went live and talked about it. Listen, I'm tired of seeing you sisters in bonnets. Stop that shit. She could have easily just went live and said that. Easily. She didn't have to embarrass somebody. But whenever Monique is embarrassed, she doubles down and finds a way to say, hey, look, my sweet babies. I have a duty to keep it real with y'all and da-da-da-da-da and tell it like it is. You got a reason you feel to tell it like it is. And some people feel like that's in a fucking appropriate and it's uncalled for. The same way Monique feels like those bonnets and shit are inappropriate and uncalled for. Nobody's going to be able to stop Monique from delivering her shit that way. The same way she feels like people need to stop wearing bonnets or whatever, putting a random person on blast. That woman know who she was and that was uncalled for. It seemed like that woman really wasn't having a good day. She had a wedgie, a bonnet, and it, it looked like them clothes was her little sister who was five sizes smaller than her clothes. She ain't had to do that. She ain't had to do that. But listen, Monique is very stuck in her ways. She's very set in her ways. And really, honestly, that's not going to change. It's not going to change. Um, Monique, she's not struggling to the point where she's trying to understand where her next meal is going to come from. So it's not like she feels like she needs Hollywood to let her in. She's just going to calm down after she comes off off of these these moments where she has this endorphin high or she blacks out a little bit, she'll come down and then diplomatically speak about it and double down on it when really had she calmed down and diplomatically spoke about things from the beginning instead of all these wild ass rants, that would get her a lot further. 
it, it would get her a lot further. <laughs> like, someone said she should embarrass them. They deserve to be embarrassed. Well, people can say that they deserve what, um, you know, what, what the general consensus and what people feel like they deserve. A lot of people felt like Monique's the problem and she deserves to be blackballed. So if that rule applies to the people that she was talking about, that she wanted to put on blast, right? When it's her turn to be put on blast, some people feel like she deserves to be, I'm not saying I'm one of the people, but I'm just saying, if we apply in blanket ass rules, we, we can't just decide when it's not going to apply. So that's why it's important to have grace, especially for your own people. We talk about our own people. She could have easily made a public service announcement about how embarrassing it is for black people to have on bonnets without putting uh, two women who were in the airport who clearly weren't having their best day. And she even said in the caption, if that's all you got, then that's all you got. But if not, do better. Who's to say that that's not all them women had? So if this is a moment for Monique to be embarrassed, called out, deemed to <laughs> blackballed, nobody's trying to work with her, it would be just as easy to say she deserves that as well. <laughs> so <laughs> this person says why can't black women make jokes about people without people thinking it's the end of the world lol it's okay for men to roast anyone they want to and they're defendant and it's just a joke i don't think so i don't think that that black men make jokes about anyone and it's accepted as just a joke because actually it's not I remember a man not too long ago made a joke about women after they have babies and how they, black women specifically after they have babies, their stomachs look like oatmeal cream pies. Some people might hear that shit and think it's funny, but there were a lot of women who were triggered. And that's not funny to talk about the natural, and a lot of people dragged that man, dragged. Everybody don't support jokes from black men about black women and again her issue being about business and being about a contract and she dragged his kid his wife his sexuality that she assumed mind you a sexuality that's basically the same as hers she's assuming he's bisexual she's bisexual too so to talk about someone's wife their kids and assume she basically said he take dick in the butt Right, because you're upset about your contract, and your contract ain't had shit to do with the your contract had everything to do with the management team and or the promoters that signed it. Dio Hughley didn't sign her contract; she did. So why drag that man on stage instead of the promoters again? Now that we understand, because this is what happened: the promoters played them. Monique is very predictable in this sense. The promoters sitting back eating Cheetos, laughing at the argument, and the promoters know that they told them both conflicting shit. Will she then take the social media and roast the shit out of the promoters the same way? No, but it's easy for her to do with the D.L. Hughley because there's a great amount of people who already don't fuck with D.L. Hughley and feel like he deserves it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, what are, what, are, what are we saying here? What are we saying here? It's not just jokes. It's not. Either side. The same way Monique said that she went on to his radio show and one of the co-hosts made a joke about, oh, would Monique, would you rather your husband, Sydney, fuck Lee Daniels without a condom or Corinne Stephan, a.k.a. Superhead with a condom, disrespectful and out of pocket? Out of pocket. Nobody's making excuses for the jokes that men tell. Or, however, she went on the D.L. Hughley show and his co-host told that show. So she's still tolling that up and amounting that to that joke came from your show, your team, your people. It's your fault. And that's not okay. And nobody's making excuses for that because it's wrong. Just saying. <laughs> Right, and then after she dragged his wife, she had the nerve to say family off limits. You know what I'm saying? 
not dragging somebody's family off. And, and then you're daring him to show his contract. His needs were met. Why does he have to put his contract on social media? You publicly asked him for his contract on social media. Instead of, matter of fact, I, I respect black people behind the scenes having heated shit like this happen rather than in front of everybody. Because if this type of heated shit happened behind the scenes, nobody would know. And it's between them and it ends there. And it's not for the public's consumption. But she was behind the scenes saying, bitch nigga, show me your show me your contract. Nah, she took it to social media, daring him to put all of his business information on social media as if that's really the forum. And it's not. It's not. And she only, and, and for you to dare somebody to show something that you haven't showed first, it says a lot. So either way, yeah, he only showed a deal memo. It's still a legally binding agreement, whatever the case is, but it's childish as hell to say, let's post our contracts on social media instead of having this conversation that you want to have with me when you really should be having this conversation with the promoters. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. We were all rooting for Monique. It seemed like she was back on the rise. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. His contract actually was fulfilled so she can make fun of his contract all all she wants to, all he's going to do is turn around and make fat, make fun of the fact that you didn't get whatever you are talking about in your contract. You feel like, you know, more, you feel like you're a better business person, but ultimately your business needs and demands weren't met. So who's really winning or losing here? You can call me stupid. You can call me this, but my bottom line was reached. You may not agree with my method or my path, but I got my bottom line. You the one over there crying about your bottom line, not me. So... <laughs> It kind of doesn't make sense. And, and this would have been a better conversation to have behind the scenes. That, that's all I'm saying. Now, listen, Monique is going to stand 10 toes down in this no matter what. However, will we be listening to some sort of tiny violin a little later on about how, oh, I'm not getting any work or da-da-da? Who knows? Who knows? But I think the DL was right on the money when he said, you set that stage on fire. And just like an arsonist, you sat and you watched how it burned. And if she's talking about unity in the black community, I, I really feel that Monique needs to work on pro, uh, um, conflict resolution. Because, listen, if you want to resolve an issue with me, and, and listen, we can have a heated discussion behind the scenes, and you call me this and I call you that, but it's behind the scenes, and I'm able to maybe heal and move forward because I know it wasn't for the public consumption. But you annihilated me, my family, my kids, and my fucking pet. Let me tell you how much I love my pet. You annihilated me and you really think there's going to be some resolve here? There is no resolve here. You set a fire and you wanted me to burn in this fire. And then you want me to still engage with you and provide what you're demanding that I post on my social media about my personal business. I'd be damned if anybody ever makes me post my motherfucking contract on social media. I'd assign many a contract and I don't give a fuck who I'm feuding with. I'd be damned if somebody who disrespects the living shit out of me forces me to upload my resume, uh, my, my contract online after they didn't came at me, my spouse, my kids. And you think I owe you that? And that's the, that's the thing that we, we talk about. I, I love you for real. Do you? No, you don't. There's, there's, there's nothing about unity or, or conducive conflict resolution within the, that fundamental sentiment. There is none. It's, it's no different than giving someone criticism and calling them every name in the book and being condescending. Nobody's going to be open to what you have to say when your delivery was so trash. You sat here and tried to shame me because you assume I take dick in the butt knowing damn well you like coochie. But all right. But all right. Moving on. Tars here says it's not a joke when you're attacking someone sexuality without proof hmm. and you never attack family because you're angry at the person i love comedy but what she did was not comedy it was condescending absolutely that was 195 percent gay shaming based off of what she's assuming and she liked the same sex too I, it's only but so many times i can say that shit shout out to all 106 of y'all if you would just hit the thumbs up button i would appreciate it so god damn much Oprah Winfrey's in my chat. She says, now can you understand why I never apologized? 
<laughs> Oprah, you need to cut it out. <laughs> Oprah said, this is exactly why. Oprah said, Monique, you need to. But you're not Stop it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. When my mother yells at this, it's because she loves me. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? You go to bed at night, you lay there, you take responsibility for yourself. Listen, Oprah not playing no game. I, I feel you, Oprah. I feel you, Oprah. People call you that. Once you tell me S your D, oh baby, you what you think I'm gonna apologize after you tell me the S your D? Oh baby. Uh, Lee Daniels, he 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 a good one. He you, you know how the old people say you better than me, because bitch, she couldn't have been me. <laughs> couldn't have been me, bitch, because shit got me fucked up. <laughs> Oprah, I know you right. <laughs> Tara say unity. How can you speak in unity while tearing down your own kind? Monique has some deep-seated emotional trauma she never truly dealt with. That's the part that I agree with because her having that issue with D.O. Hughley had nothing to do with Oprah, Steve Harvey, Tyler Perry. And here she go dragging. It's like, yo, will you ever heal? Are you ever going to heal from this? Because honestly, they had nothing to do. For At this point, it's like Will Monique ever be able to fit into a sentence without Oprah and all them having to go into it? This is overshadowing, right? This is outshining her actual talent. And Monique is very talented. I went to go see her late last year in person right here in Baltimore. Funny as hell. She was really good. But this type of stuff, it outshines any talent that we're trying to remember. She sticks to the Queens of Comedy 15 something years ago. Precious, 10 some years ago. Whatever the case, like, but what's going on now? Because right now, all that's going on is all these fires that you set. Goddamn, an occupational hazard. Not called Monique an occupational hazard. Okay? <laughs> I just, I, I just, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> oh, they did say that that's her son. I can't. I can't. It's a lot. 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 Look. Look. This was definitely a situation. Look, I think a lot of us ate this up. It was very, um, it was easy to fall into this whole debacle between Monique and Lee Daniels. Why? Because last week was so tense for us. Last week was so sad. It was so tense knowing everything that happened from Texas to Buffalo and all that other stuff. And we just needed something that wasn't a slaughter or murderous towards blacks or children. So this was something that, listen, the people ate up and the people are still eating up, right? Because D.O. Hughley is, 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 you know, sending off his, his, his last shots. He's sending off his last shots. So, oh, snap. He put something in his stories, too. Hold on. Here I am trying to move on to the next thing. He put something in his stories. Hold up. What did he say? Okay, okay. What's in these stories? That's not it. That's not it. I blame myself because I know you. From queen of comedy to queen of ashes, straight no chaser. What really happened between Damn, me and Monique? Okay. Saying yes to you is an occupational hazard. You... Okay. So that's what he said. Wasn't anything new per se. But nonetheless, this is what he is getting into. Listen, he got every right to respond. Like I said in the last video, in the first video that I did about this, I'm like, look. He gets to busting out his paperwork, right? He gets to respond to her. And people are like, oh, my God, y'all need to stop. Oh, my God, if you don't just stop arguing with her right now, let it go. No, he had the right to respond. It wasn't like she just said one or two things that was a little bothersome. She intentionally hit below the belt because she wanted a reaction. She, she set that fire, and she wanted to see how he shimmied in the flames. And she got it. He has he has every right to respond after his wife, his kid, his dog, and his sexuality were attacked like that brutally. He had every right. Come on now. Come on now. Make it make sense. Leo, 
stop. What you doing? I'm live on the air and you want to be eating bags. Stop. I'm going to put you out. <sighs> Look. I'm trying to get the cat to stop. And he just, he just doing, this is a very sassy cat. If y'all don't believe that I have a sassy cat, look. Leo, get down. Get down. It's not a thank you, because it's not a question. Show the, show the people. Okay. Yeah, because you want to be the star of the show, so come on, entertain them. If you want to interrupt it, you want this other treat? I'm going to put it. Come on, here. You interrupted the show to do this. Okay, come on, show you. The people want to see. The, uh, yeah, the people. Wait, oh, wait, wait, the people. Uh, you, uh. That's it. Okay, you, the least you can do is speak. Say hello. Hey, the camera. Say hello. Say hi. I destroyed my collar because I'm a terrorist. Introduce yourself the correct way. Yeah, since that's what you want to do. Sometimes they like you more than they like me. Here. Damn, did you eat dinner? Did you chew up the treat? Speak to the people. Speak. Speak to the people. Look. All right. Goodbye. Go ahead. You need your own channel. Because clearly you think you run this. This one's mine. This one's mine. This is a sick Negro. This is a sick Negro. Man. Okay. All right. Now that we, maybe, maybe we can get back to the show. God damn. All right. Here, here, here you go. Just trying to be disruptive. You've been hanging around Monique. So, you know what I mean? Let me stop for he let me stop for he get Monique on me and attack my ass live instead of handle it behind the scenes when we get done. <laughs> let me stop for he get me because these people need to know what it is by besides behind the scenes. I'm gonna get you live, ma. <laughs> nope. Your ass will get evicted. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Okay. You see how the people stay right here when you hear 100 people just stay. Anytime I reach 100, it drops right down to 85 or something. As soon as it reach 100, because the people disappear because I'm not entertaining enough, but they want to see you and your lazy, greedy ass and your sassy ass. See, because they like you more than they like me. That's the problem. Anyway. He think he run this. He's he swear he runs this, and he don't. But he do. But he do. But he don't. Anyway, <laughs> so you just gonna call her a terrorist because she's black? <laughs> Look, I can't with him. He's too much. Here's what I want to get into right now, right? Because look, there's there's not much left to say about. Monique, Dio Hughley, but yeah, cats are very unbothered. They're too unbothered for me. Like, hello, you haven't paid rent your whole life. It, what it's been eight years now. You ain't never paid no rent ever. And you just don't even care about at least being polite. You know, if you live somewhere and you didn't have to pay no rent, how like polite and like like helpful you would be. Not cats. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. <laughs> They're like, you worship me. This is not Egypt. They, they worship y'all in Egypt way back in the day. They do not worship y'all in modern days and times. But they don't get that. <laughs> they don't get that. See what I deal with with my son. 
Y'all see what I do? He's so sassy. He's so opinionated. And it's got to be his way. Where does he get that from? That's always a funny ass rhetorical question because that's fucking me. But that's not the point. The point is he's not human. He doesn't pay bills. And I don't feel like he should be entitled to the same rights as I am. Being sassy and opinionated and having a really strong opinion. I don't feel like he has that right because he doesn't pay bills. So, but what? whatever though, whatever, whatever. Leo's moment is over. Leo needs his own segment because clearly the people like it. Jesus, all these cat emojis and shit in the chat. Forget y'all, y'all supposed to love me. This is my show. Goodbye. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on to the next segment. Let's go to Popeye's, y'all. And I don't mean literally, right? Because it's quarter to two. I don't mean literally, but figuratively, let's go to Popeye's. And take a look at this outrageous story that transpired between um, a bitch nigga and an employee, right? Well, well, the bitch nigga is the employee. They were actually two employees. Um, but I would rather reduce him down to a bitch nigga um, because of what he did, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at this, right? I'm going to go ahead and pause. I'm going to make it bigger. And let's see. Right? Popeye's manager captured on video attacking an employee who was 16 years old who allegedly wanted to clock out. You're not going to let up on nobody else. You know, right now, we're all playing. You're not going to let up on nobody else. I don't care about hey, nothing. I don't. I don't. You got my face. You got my face. I don't. We need to. I don't. I don't. We need to. I don't. What? 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 So he banged her in the face. Yeah, Oprah, he hit her and talking about I don't mind losing this job. Okay, well, do you mind losing your freedom? Because, baby, you got a mugshot now. I think he was the manager. Okay, so hold on. Let's take a look at the mugshot. It says Marquez. Hold on. Let's let's we want to get it closer, baby. We want this close up. Okay. Mugshot, buddy. Marquez J. Sean Smith. Now, baby, let me tell you something. Baby, look at the spelling of his name. J. Sean. Cause show is show. And shown is shown. And J. Sean is J. Sean. So this is Marquez. Jay, cause bitch, I'm a clown you. Cause you out here hitting minors because she she ain't even pose a threat. She's on the phone cause she wanna clock out. You the manager over here, okay? And your red beans and rice yellow shirt, and you gonna square up and hit a woman, a, a younger, a minor? Marquez, you out of pocket. Battery and cruelty to children in the first degree. What else can they add? What else can they add? Cause you need more. You are sick. This is a sick Negro. Get him out of here. Uh-uh. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. He need his ass beat. A hundred percent. That's not funny. That's mean. Mm-mm. It's not it. He out of pocket. Out of pocket for that shit. Way out of pocket. What do you gain from that? 
They say he should have been stomped out. I agree. He definitely should have been stomped out. I'd be tired of men standing around watching women be brutalized in this way. There were too many men around. There, there, there were more men than women. There's no reason that they didn't retaliate against him and put some hurting on him since he wanted to hit a woman who wasn't even... It's not even that he just wasn't hit. She wasn't squaring up. She wasn't threatening to hit him. She's standing there with her phone to her ear. What would make you just hit a child like that? That management position, putting them pieces of chicken in boxes and shit, got you feeling that high and mighty. I used to work at fast food for years. And there are some managers that really, they get real power hungry with their little ass fucking shift manager, right? Dipping fries and making fucking burgers. And I, let me tell you, I did it for over four years. As a teenager, because it, it was so it was so much money for me, right? When I was in high school and I was working a lot of hours and I always got a lot of overtime because I wanted to spend more time at work than I did at home. It was miserable at home for me. The childhood that was provided for me just, it wasn't the best. And being at home with my mother was miserable as fuck. So I always wanted to work. I'm like, well, shit, I can get paid and be away from her. It's a win-win. This is pathetic. This is pathetic. And he definitely need his ass beat. You can see his little frail ass. First of all, ain't used to throwing hands. It might be the first time he ever threw a boat in his life. But he had to do that on a minor and a, a, a girl minor at that. Yeah, you need your ass beat. Was hitting her supposed to make her stay on the clock? Was you trying to jip her out of a break? Because, baby, an employee will try to make you seem like you can't get a break or you got to work extra. Where you going to go? We ain't got nobody to come in. So you have to say, I don't have to do shit. The schedule say what? The labor laws are what? It's time for me to get off. Matter of fact, it's 32 minutes after I get off. I gave you an extra 30 minutes to be nice. I'm leaving. And some you can't leave because who? I don't know who. I ain't got the answers to all your questions. I just work here. He need his ass beat. She was probably on her phone to make sure there was a witness that could hear the bullshit she was going through. You know what I'm saying? When you work in environments like that, sometimes you can't believe what you're going through and you sometimes might phone a friend like you want who wants to be a millionaire just to make sure I'm experiencing this. Girl, do you hear this? Keep me calm. I'm leaving. I'm about to clock out. I'm already two hours over the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and also, she's a minor. You must be out your mind. And you better hope her male family members don't give you a little bit of something something when you get out on bond, too. Because he'll get out on bond. You know what I'm saying? The price that you have to pay for physically assaulting women is not near as much as it should be. So I'm pretty sure his bond ain't for so much. He'll be out. He'll be out before the end of the week. And he better hope. First of all, he first of all, he needs to be fired. Let's start there. Right. But hopefully with these charges, he's already fired. But he also need a little street justice handed to him, too. That's what needs to happen. Queens Keish says, I quit my job before the manager has no right to punt. OK. Her family will take care. I hope so. Astute says people think they can just do whatever and they'll have no consequence behind it. Yeah. Niggas scared of jail. Letting the money get touched like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be true. But that, you know, that was crazy. And it was definitely something I wanted to talk about. I'm like, listen, we just shooting the shit. Here on the late night, getting into the latest as it pertains to D.L. Hughley and Monique. Who knows if Monique is going to say a little bit of extra something, something tomorrow. Um, ultimately, like I said, D.O. Hughley's demands were met and Monique's just were not. That's just it. Um, listen, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for checking the community tab. Don't forget to check the community tab. Don't forget to do something to relax today. But also, I did a really, really, really um, heavy video right before this when we went live and we talked about some issues up underneath of that flag. Y'all know the issues under the flag. You know what flag I'm talking about. Everybody in the community is not a problem. But there are some issues that are undeniable and need to be spoken on. And Grandpa Joe just so happens to be um, implementing a policy where he is 
taking free lunch and taking lunch money from kids in need and kids who are hungry out of schools if the school doesn't oblige with the transgender agenda in allowing boys into the girls' bathroom. So if you aren't putting the school girls at risk by allowing boys with girl pronouns, right, or, or, or transgenders into the girls' bathroom, then they're taking federal funding from the schools. So schools are in the pickle, even if they want to stand up or stand with the protection of the school girls, they then have to worry about who's going to foot the bill for food if they don't oblige. So it's really interesting because the LGBT community is considered to be a protected class, unlike black Americans. So it's a pretty heavy discussion. I recommend you watch it. And I really would appreciate if you would share that video because it's definitely one of those videos that talks about too much truth and it'll be suppressed by the algorithm and whoever and whatever else. So do me a favor, watch that video. We're going to get off of this one. Go watch that one if you haven't already as I break down that policy. And I basically take you straight to the food and nutrition website where that policy is laid out where the Biden administration is empowering the Department of Agriculture to go ahead and implement this into the school systems. It's very frightening. It's very sickening. It's very dangerous. And one thing that I do over here on this channel is to talk about issues underneath of the flag. It is something that a lot of people don't want to talk about. It's something that a lot of people are afraid to talk about. They're afraid of being labeled um, phobic or the community coming after them. Listen, I'm not a member of the LGBT community, but I am willing to talk about um, the the predators who are targeting right our children. And the predators could be random people on the streets or the school systems or the government who are writing and drafting this type of legislation to push through the pipeline of the school system. So it's not just random perverts and pedophiles who are trying to groom your children. It's the government and some of these school systems who are backing this stuff too. And it's really dangerous and it's a necessary dialogue and a lot of people aren't brave enough to talk about it. Do some, do I worry about the community coming after me sometimes and labeling me phobic? Yeah, I worry about it sometimes, but these are difficult conversations that need to be had. And God damn it, what I got to lose? I already lost my channel with over 102,000 subscribers. I only got 5,000 here. So if I lose my little 5,000 subscribers, oh, well, I'll just start a new one. But I might as well take some risk and talk about some shit that's going to protect the leaders of tomorrow. When we become old and decrepit and need help taking care of ourselves, it's going to be these youth that we either protect or don't protect that are going to be taking care of us. So it's important that we give a fuck about them. Because, you know, this is the thing. We come into this life needing pampers, needing somebody to roll us around because we can't walk. The cycle towards the latter end of life is the same thing. You're going to be wearing pampers. Depends. You won't be able to walk and you're going to need somebody to roll you around in your wheelchair as opposed to a stroller. Who are those people going to be that are rolling you around? The leaders of tomorrow. So it's important that we protect them and we treat them right. All right. That's all I got to say. It is two o'clock in the morning over here in Baltimore. Baltimore stand up. Okay. Um, make sure if you haven't already that you have subscribed to the channel um, this Sunday, we are having a panel about all things with regards to issues under the flag. Okay. And when I talk about issues under the flag, I'm talking about the predatory behavior that is being categorized and merged with the LGBT community, right? And it's being used as a shield or a loophole to get away with more. Children are targeted. They're being forced to consume and deal with the politicization of the LGBTQ agenda. They're being groomed. They're being indoctrinated. And they know that a great amount of people are apprehensive to ask these questions. They're afraid of being labeled as phobic. They're afraid of the community coming after them. And a lot of this stuff that's going on in the school system specifically, it happens without parental consent. And instead, it's being powered and executed by the school system and new governmental policies. And a lot of times we find out when it's just a little bit too late. So these are some of the things that my channel was working on, some of the causes. I think that this panel is going to be amazing this Sunday, 12 o'clock noon, okay? Eastern Standard Time this coming Sunday. It is a panel for any and all members of the LGBT community who want to help have the discussion about the untouched and undiscussed patterns in the community underneath of the flag. I know that that's not a representation. I know that that's not the intent. Um, 
of the community at large. But these people are trying their best to blend in and attach themselves to the community because they know they're less prone to be questioned there. So I think that it's really sick, disgusting, and all of that stuff, okay? I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, okay? Tar says, exactly, Jane, speak truth. You got to protect the kids. The United States and Europe promotes this. Absolutely. <laughs> Not Oprah saying I love us for real. <laughs> hey, Aaron Bernard, you is late. You is late. So make sure you go ahead and catch the replay. This is second live of the night. I did two lives tonight. So this is the second one. Bonita says, I wonder what Kamala has to say. Will we ever get Kamala to answer the real questions that need answers? Very rhetorical because I fucking doubt it. I very fucking doubt it. Ooh, stay positive. Okay, I will. I will. No, I had to throw the shade. I'm shady boo. Okay. So look, y'all do me a favor. Make sure you stay beautiful, black, and blessed, okay? If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But don't forget to think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. Y'all stay beautiful, black, and blessed, and throw up some of them pancakes in the chat. Talk to y'all tomorrow or later today. Bye. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.